Hi and welcome to another BrettWeiss.com Excel screencast. Today's screencast is going to be on the macro recorder. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you'd like the workbook to follow along, head over to BrettWeiss.com forward slash Excel dash screencast, select the macro recorder video and underneath the video screen you'll see two links. The first link is to the workbook as you see it right now before we went through it so that you can follow along. The second workbook is the completed workbook that you'll see after this lesson is done. So the macro recorder is usually most people's, most non-programmers way of getting introduced to VBA. What the macro recorder does is once we've turned it on it's going to record our keystrokes in Excel everything we do, every value we enter into every cell, every copy and paste it's going to record our keystrokes, convert it into VBA code and then allow us to repeat those steps on command automatically. The macro recorder is very good for simple macros and it's also very good for learning how to write VBA code. If you're ever unsure how to do something and you can't write a VBA statement to, to accomplish what you want to accomplish, record the keystrokes in the macro. So if I don't know how to insert a chart in VBA, turn on the macro recorder, insert a chart regularly on the worksheet, and then go back to the code and look how the VBA recorder converted the actions into code. So first we're gonna take a look at the macro recorder buttons if you head up to the developer tab make sure you have the developer tab showing if you don't head to file options I can just do it real quick file options options dialog bar comes up head to the customized ribbon look for the developer tab make sure there's a check and then click OK so let's head to the developer tab what we're gonna focus on most in this lesson is this section to the left the code section so first of all this visual basic button will bring up our visual basic editor which we will be going into in a second this is where we can view our code and look at what the macro recorder has recorded to the right of that is our view macros button you can also use alt f8 and we're gonna see that in a second too this will show all the macros we've created in all of our open workbooks to the right of that these three buttons here the record macro button that's what we're going to use to start recording our macro the use relative references button we're going to get into that in just one second and the macro security button this will allow you to set your macro security to the level that you desire I recommend this setting disable all macros with notification so we'll just get out of that the crucial distinction we need to make in the macro recorder is whether we're going to record our macro with relative references or absolute references. When I say relative and absolute references, that's just the same as when we type in formulas. Say I have a bunch of numbers here, and then I have a formula in this column that says equals A3. This is a relative reference. If I copy this formula down one cell, our formula reference also moves down a cell. So where it said A3 here, now it says A4. If I move down one more time, it'll say A5. And absolute references, if I push the F4 key, now it's an absolute reference. No matter where I move this cell, it's always going to equal A3. So let's just do an example and we can see exactly what this all means for our macro recorder. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to record an absolute ma reference macro. So we go up to the developer tab. We're going to press record macro. It's going to bring up the record macro dialog box. We're just going to give this macro the name absolute record. If you want to assign a shortcut key, you can assign a key that when you push control in whatever key you assign, it'll fire the macro. This is really handy, but I only recommend doing this if you're the only person using the workbook in case somebody else comes in, doesn't realize there's a shortcut key, and runs your macro in a place where they're not supposed to. We also have the store macro in. And we're just going to store it in this workbook. You can store it in a personal macro workbook. We're not going to get into that. You can uh, look onto the internet for help on creating a personal macro, macro workbook. We're just going to click OK, and now we've started recording. And we can tell we've started recording because in the status bar, we're going to notice a blue stop button and if we highlight it it'll say a macro is currently recording click to stop recording so when we're done recording we can either click this button or we can look at the developer tab 
and you'll notice that the start recording macro button has changed to a stop recording macro button so we can stop the recording that right now it's just important to remember we've started recording our macro code so whatever keystrokes we use now on are going to be recorded and converted into VBA code so we're just gonna make a really extremely simple macro we're gonna select A2 and we're just gonna put a zero we're gonna move down a row over a column and put one down a row over a column two down a row over a column three and up to five push enter at the end and we're gonna stop recording now we're gonna clear this data and we're gonna illustrate the differences between an absolute recording and a relative recording so just clear that data head back up to the developer tab this time I want you to select the use relative references button you'll know it's selected because now we go back to the developer tab and we can see it's highlighted so now we're going to record the exact same macro using the use relative references so we're going to name that macro relative record we're not going to assign a shortcut key or anything to this either we're going to click OK we've started recording our macro click the active cell click cell A2 and now 0 same thing as before enter stop recording now we're gonna run our macros and you'll see the difference between an absolute reference and a relative reference so if we clear this data again click anywhere in the spreadsheet go to the developer tab click the macros button click the absolute make sure the absolute record is selected and click run it did the exact same thing as we did when we recorded it put the zero in the A2 one two three four five down a row over a column but now what we do we're gonna put our cell instead of putting our active cell in A2 we're gonna put our active cell in A3 now we're gonna re now we're gonna run a macro we're gonna run the relative record macro so press the relative record click run and you'll notice what it did it didn't record the macro starting in cell A2 instead it recorded the cell starting where we started so if we start down here run the relative record macro again you'll see it starts from down here it's a relative reference if we go over to the VBA code press alt 11 I'll show you what's making the relative reference so first of all in our visual basic editor whenever we start a macro recording for the first time what Excel is doing gonna do it's gonna insert a module into the workbook we've specified that we want the macro in so in this case it inserted module 1 into our workbook and now you can see the code the sub absolute macro versus the sub relative macro another drawback of the macro recorder is that we can't record functions we can only record subroutines or macros so we're gonna go back up and view the absolute record the reason this is absolute is that we have no active cell properties in our code it's strictly this range this range this range this range this range and this range every time we run this macro it's gonna put the 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 in the exact same spot if you go down to the relative record macro you're going to see a whole bunch of active cell properties this means it's gonna start in whatever cell we're currently starting in so in the absolute macro it didn't matter if we were starting in a1 or a50 it was gonna put those values in the exact same place in this macro if we start in a4 that's where it's gonna put it that's where it's gonna put the first number if we sell if we start in c43 that's where it's gonna put the first number so this is the distinction you have to make when you're recording your macro do you want it to be flexible with a relative reference or do you want it the same every time like an absolute reference lastly we're gonna compare these two macros with two that I wrote to accomplish the exact same thing and you'll notice a big drawback of the macro recorder is that things aren't very easy to read if we look at these modules there's no indentation there's a bunch of lines of code that aren't necessary and overall the macro recorder quite frankly is kind of a mess 
If we go over to my written code, it's much clearer, it's much easier to follow, even though in this in this case it, it actually isn't that much easier to follow because it's such a simple macro. But if once we get into more complicated macros, you'll find that when you look at the macro recorder code, often it's very difficult to know what's going on. Code that we write is also much more efficient and quicker to run when we get into more complicated macros. So that's an introduction to the macro recorder. I encourage you to record a bunch of macros, you doing a bunch of different things, and start to see the code behind what you're doing in the worksheet. This will allow you to get a feel for what VBA is all about, and it's a great building block to start writing your own code. I want to thank you for watching this screencast on brettweiss.com. Have a great day.